And this is just a phrase, but the, the truth is that nowadays the market is getting more demanding. People are getting more, more demanding. Even every, everyone here, is, when it's using an application, if it fails, if it crashes, probably you won't use it again. I won't use it again. So uh, good is not enough and everyone expects better. And to have better, we have to test what we are producing it. You, you can do that, and uh, I think you do when you are developing, but sometimes you don't have the time because deadlines are, are short and we know that. And sometimes you, you also don't have the objectivity to do it. So that's why quality has to enter here. And uh, just to show you some numbers, why quality is important, I, I must say that this m might be not 100% accurate, but I think it's getting pretty close of it. Uh, and I'm talking about mobile Android. When, when we go to Google Play Store and we see the comments on the, the applications and we know that easy, it's easier to, to say bad things about the applications than, than compliments, but uh, many of the comments have things like crashes, not working, can't open, and these are our applications. The applications that you develop, that we test, sometimes people complain about it. And if we want that people keep using the applications, we have to uh, get these comments not so often. So the, the, the thing to do here, and I'm going to show you some numbers. This was a study made by a technological magazine. Once again, the, the numbers might not be 100% accurate, but they are close. 23% of the apps, uh, this was a study with 288 devices and 70 million tests. 23% uh, of the apps behave differently when a new version is installed. Okay, we have an old app, it has updates and we, we're, we go there and update our app and they will not behave as expected. 68% uh, of testing failed when five of the apps were randomly picked out of 10, uh, out of 100. So they are failing uh, a lot sometimes. Uh, also, 80% of the downloaded apps are only used once. And here, I think is the, the most common problem is that many of us download apps and all the users, but we only using, are using it once. We never repeat the, the experience. And then 60% uh, of the users will only try again once if, if it fails. Only 60% will do that again. So sometimes you we only have one shot to do things right. And the best way to do it is with you developing awesome apps, and I know that you do that, but you have to need our help to assure that the apps are the best possible and that we can be proud of the, the, the things that we are doing and the things that we are developing. But then that's when it comes to teamwork. And it's possible for us to work together. And I think the, the mindset has to be changed. And instead of having a developer team and a quality assurance team, we have to think about this with only one team. We only have one team with different roles. Because when you are, de uh, are developing, you have your team, you have a project, manage, a, a project manager, you have a team leader, you, you have a solution architect, wherever, and now you have another roles on the team that are the testing people. We are going to test it, but we make part of your team and we all work together with a common goal that is delivering the best software possible to the hands of the users. But now that we are friends now and we can, <laughs> and we can go along from, from here, there are some challenges that we have to overcome. And once again, I'm talking about mobile applications, Android applications. And about this, we have, uh, from my point of view, of course, three major problems. One is fragmentation. Every know, everyone here knows that word if you are develop developing Android. Fragmentation is, is one of the, the most challenging things when it comes to developing Android and testing Android. Because there are several devices, several resolutions, several oper operating systems, and we are not able to test it all. We are not able to test it all. Another thing is about the network. Uh, 
users that are using mobile applications want to use it while running around. The, the, this is not now we have to to get the applications working over Wi-Fi, over mobile data, uh, even over roaming, and we have to to make sure that the application behaves correctly under all these these scenarios. And this sometimes is not so easy as it seems. Also, the app type. We have web apps, hybrid apps. We have pre-embedded clients. We have most. We have several scenarios, and our apps has to be working correctly under all that scenarios. So, by this, what I want to try to tell you is that there are lots and lots of things to test. And if we don't test it, if we only release the the, the applications to the market without tests probably this would not go well. So, apart from all this, I have that, that clock over there because sometimes the, the biggest problem is all of that that I already mentioned, but it's also time. Because everyone knows that deadlines are short. We, we most of the times are running to get things done and the time is the, the, the key factor on, on all of this. So, how can we overcome this? We, we don't have all the time that we want, but how can we overcome this? Sometimes, and most of, most, I, I won't say most, but uh, many people think of one thing as the whole solution from, for, for this problem. And this one thing is automation. So, automation is awesome, is an awesome, but is it really the, the problem solver? Is it really the big idea here? If we automate everything, everything will be better and we will we'll get to test everything correctly? Well, there are some cases when automation is not the best thing to do. There are other cases when automation is, is awesome and can solve a lot of problems and a lot of time and a lot of resource issues. But um, I'm going to show you just four points that, uh, in which sometimes automation is good, sometimes not so good. We have stability. So we have the first iteration of our application and is going to, to the market or, or is not going to the market. Uh, we, the, the first version of the application and we, try and we uh, start to, to think about how we are going to test it. Well, if the product is not stable, if it keeps constantly changing, if we are always adding new features or changing the flows, automation would not be a, a, a great idea because we will do the tests and we will have to maintain the tests. And sometimes to maintain these tests is even more difficult and more time consuming than do it manually. And sometimes it's, it's good to have that in mind because we, if we go and automate and have to change things around constantly, we will not be able to have the time properly to, to test the, the, the applications. What about regression testing? Well, we have the application stable. We have a set of tests that we are constantly uh, that we are repeating, and this has, has to be done uh, on every iteration of the software. In this case, it would be a good idea to have an automation system in place because the regression set is probably always the same set and we have to, to test the same things all over again. And this way, if we have the, the automation in place, it will run automatically without human interaction and everything will be tested and we will get the results more, much more faster. And in this, in this situation, it's a good thing to do. When we have multiple data sets, if we have an application, for instance, that generates reports, we have to generate the report over and over again with, dif with, different, the, with different data sets. When we are talking about this, it might be good also to have an automating uh, system for the testing because we have to repeat the same, the same, the same all over again. And in each iteration that we do this, we have to change the data. So, if it is automatic, it will be much, much easier to do it, much faster to do it. Also, when we have uh, an application that uh, keeps the same flow every time, we have to log in, we have to go uh, this option, this option, this option to do something. If we have something like that, automation will be also a good thing. But 
w what I'm trying to say here is that when you have, and especially when you work uh, with the changes and things, cons uh, uh, change requests that the client that, that the client wants to change, uh, the client comes and says, "Okay, uh, I don't want this, and I don't, I don't, I don't want his, this here. I want that that there." And w the application keeps changing. Sometimes it's better to understand if it's really a good thing to automate or if it's, if manually uh, manually testing can solve the problem. Now, now that we choose to automate something, how can we choose the tool for the automation? If you make uh, a quick research, you will see on, on Google several and several and several tools to automate the, the, the apps. In this case, mobile apps, Android apps. You will see there are several, many different applications, some open source, some paid, and you have to choose one. So how can you do this? How can you choose one tool? I think this is the, the, most, the, the most challenging thing because once that you choose the, the tool that you are going to use, if you choose the tool wrong, in the end, sometimes you have to re redo everything. And we, obviously, we don't, don't want that. So we have to have in mind some factors like application type, like the, the tests that we want to do, do, you, do we want a performance tests? Do we want only just some UI testing? We have to know exactly what we want to test. Also the supported language, because there are, there are some, some tests that we can do that co can go deeper and not only UI level. And for this, sometimes we have to develop scripts and have to code a bit. But is the, is the language supported something that uh, will take a learning curve? Uh, is that something that uh, our team is capable to do? Or do we, do we have to, to spend lots of time uh, teaching and getting, and getting training for, for, for this language? Also, the supported API levels. There are many tools that do not support the, late, the, the latest API. Uh, API. So this would be a problem also because we want always to be updated. Other things that uh, it's like must have, I, I would say nice to have, would be better there. So cross-app interaction. This for me uh, personally is the, the, the main thing and sometimes the most challenging thing when it comes to automation. If you think on a mobile application, you open the application, and some of the applications have to communicate with other parties on the system. Like, if you have an application to, to back up your photos, you will have to access the gallery, you will have to, or, or if you have uh, an application to manage your messaging or contacts, you will have to go to test it, you will have to go to your address book and you have to keep changing between your application and some of the native applications. And most of the tools, uh, many tools that, that appear on, on a Google search uh, will not allow us to do this. And we will be confined to the application itself and we are not able to go, to go around. Also, test creation tools. Some of the applications, uh, some of the tools to, to automate have like uh, inspectors or uh, play and rec record fun uh, features and this sometimes it's easier when we are um, creating the test cases to have these features to help us to do that. Uh, especially the, the, the inspector like UI automator that we can see every element on the page that is very helpful for us to know exactly the IDs of the elements, the the with the, the, the containers, all, all the information that, that we need to perform the test. Also, it's uh, a key factor if it runs only on simulator or if it allows real devices. And gestures library support. Uh, for instance, that there are tools that when you swipe to, to, to test a swipe, you have to do it by coordinates. This is not very easy to do, is not the, the, the best way to do it, but uh, some, some of, of the tools all already support these gestures library that are helpful. So when after choosing a tool, we have to perform the tests. And now there's, there's, that's the time when all of you can help. There are here any Android developers? Android. Okay, many. <laughs> 
So uh, there are things, and the things that I'm going to show you, uh, it's not that we can can do the can do the tests without it because we can. There are workarounds, but there there are minor things that you can do when you are developing that will help us to do things faster. And I'm going to show you just a few examples. Just to, to give a, a little bit of context, this, this is a, an application to send message and uh, uh, receive calls and messages and S SMS and message like, like chats. In this, in this example, if you see here the, the emoticons, all the emoticons, we could have a test that is to send all the emoticons and see if they are received on the other side. This is a, a, a test that we could do. Manually, this would take a lot of time because if we have 100 emoticons, 200, 300, would be, would be time consuming to do this manually. We, are, we have to go there and tap, tap the buttons until all the emoticons are, are tapped. By doing this automatically, we are able to uh, do this for every emoticon. However, when something like this happens, uh, the problem that I have there is that all the emoticons has, ha, have the same ID. So I don't know when, when I'm going to perform my test, I don't know if the first emoticon is something and, and the other is another, uh, is another one because the ID is always the same. So some, some, some of the things that you could help is to, to put the proper IDs on the elements or to give us the, the description or the accessibility labels, for instance, to do, to do that. Another, another example, if you see that, that arrow over, the, over there, this is when it's going, the, the image is being sent, this is when it's going by SMS, this is when it's going over chat. Well, in these two, in these two the attribute changes because it was green and now and now is blue, but I don't have information about that. I have the same element on two different screens that represent different things, but I can I can know when I'm when I'm doing the the tests. I c I'm not able to know if there is blue or if it's green by the by the ID by the description or whatever the the element can tell me. In here also, this is the, the same case as at the first one. I have two options, clearly different. There are different options. This is like a call that is the attachment. And from these two, once again, the ID is the same. Once again, it will be most difficult for us to, to automate this. In here, it's the other way around. We have the same option on two different screens, but the button is the same, the option is the same, but the ID is different. So these are, these, these are small things that you can do that will facilitate our lives much more and will be much more easier for us to do this. Just another, another example, in here I have the, the send and the delivery date, and, but it's all one element. This could be uh, two elements for, for be easy to access, th access it. This one, once again, I only have one element. Uh, in here, I could put the time, I could change the time by, by tapping on the screen. But to automate this, I don't have information on how to do that. I can go by coordinates, but if the resolution changes, everything is wrong again, and it's not the best way to do it by coordinates or by XPath or whatever. Just one more. This is similar to the others. This, I, I don't think this is very clear to see, but uh, that, that element there and uh, the clock, the, the ID, once again, is the same. There are different informations that they give, but the ID is the same, the elements are the same. So just for saying that you can also help us to uh, automate the, st the, the tests and doing, in doing it uh, in, in an easier way, because there are ways to do it without all of this, and we can also do it, but it will be difficult for us to do it. Then, when all the tests are automated, like following a process, w there are many ways to, to get the builds tested, to, to get the, the tests running. But I'm going to show you how, how we usually do it. There's not, it's not the only way, it's a way to do it. Well, we love continuous integrations. I, th I think everyone loves continuous integration. So 
in our case, when when we when we got a development build in the continuous integration system, the the automated test build is also triggered, and is triggered and the, the tests are run over the latest build. Every day this happens. We have a daily build, then the automated test build is also triggered, and then we have the report. We also have uh, functional test automation, but also performance test automation. And then the automated test build is run. After that, the performance tests are performed, and this happens every day, every day when a development build is out. This helps us because Every day we know exactly uh, regression-wise, uh, re regression-related tests. We, we know exactly if something was break by the new developments, if some bugs were injected on the, on the old code. And for that, we don't need to manually perform tests because this will give us all the information. And by doing this, we will find the bugs faster we will find the bugs earlier and you are able to, the, the developers are then able to correct them and able to, to, to deliver the, the builds with, with much more quality. And that's uh, how we do it every day. And it's been just, just for saying that when we found the bugs faster and earlier on earlier stages, we are getting the time to do another things because the time once again is the key factor we most of the times you don't have time to test we, you don't have time to to do your things and this way and the automated tests and with the continuous integration we are able to do that in a faster way in an earlier way just another thing when when i'm talking about functional tests i'm not only i'm, I'm not only talking about ui testing uh, we are not only performing taps on the screen. We s many, many times go deeper than that. And when the, report are, when the reports are generated, the developer knows exactly what happened, where it happened, and m most of the times the root cause for that. And this is really what quality is. It's not only tapping buttons to, to tell you that I have a bug or I have a crash that you have to solve. It's working together to find solutions and find the root cause of the problems in order to deliver the best quality possible, the, the best software possible with high quality standards that the things that, are, that we want to do. And that's why that sometimes, and just for finishing, sometimes we have to break it first. And our job is to break it first in order to make it later. So that's it. Questions? Please don't no. ask something <laughs> that will make Miriam sad, because <laughs> then I'll suffer. Hi. Uh, Hi. Uh, what tools do you use in uh, Android for automating tests? Automated Android test? automation? Yes. Yes, uh, currently we are using Apium, that it's a, a free open source. And we are using it once again because it allows us to interact with different parts of the system. We don't have only our app, but we can uh, interact with the gallery, with contacts, with network, and we can do all that when using APM. And APM also uh, works with web, web apps, uh, desktop. Uh, it works with a lot of things, so we, we are using it currently. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, Expresso? It's from Google. Yes, yes, Expresso. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't work a lot with with Expresso. Just, just a few tutorials to know something. I think it's UI testing, of course. For UI testing, I think it's it's a good thing. But once again, the main problem is not assessing other things outside the app, and it has that problem too. So it, it's difficult when you work with application that has to to integrate with other with other application on the native system if you don't have to uh, a way to do that so the tool would, would be would be not a fit for what you are doing Thank okay you. any other questions no okay then So it's we're trying to fix it.